everybody, this is Jay Sear and today we're going to be making a video um, or making soap and I'm showing you in the video of uh, using balsam poplar buds. This and there's another variety is also known as like the black cottonwood buds. Um, you can see a few of the balsam poplar trees behind me. Um, I generally pick my buds in April, mid-April, but again we're at a we're fairly north in northern Maine. So um, a lot of people will find that they actually go pick their buds in February or March. Um, so I pick these buds that I use in my soap recipe that I'll show you in a sec in April. And then I froze them and then I thawed them just a few days ago. And then I put them in my jars and I infused them. And I'll show you a little bit of that in the video. But basically when you're doing an infusion with the balsam poplar buds, you want to use a one to three. Uh, ratio so one part buds to three parts oil so if you're using four ounces of buds you'd want to use about 12 ounces of oil and you don't need to that's just a starting place you could use more you could use less depending on what you have in the recipe that I use today um, <clears throat> it's a much higher concentration probably more almost a one-to-one -one. Um, but I had the buds so it's we'll make a strong infusion um, I infuse it in the Sun over a couple days and then again, I'll show you how I did that sort of in the video. Um, so the reason that people like this uh, balsam poplar is because it's very uh, it, therapeutic or it's really good for the skin if you're not allergic to it. Um, so it ha contains salicylic acid, which is also found in aspirin. So uh, people use it as like a, they put it on insect bites or well, they'll make a salve and put that on insect bites or scrapes or cuts and when my kids were younger I would actually make like a salve and use it in place of Neosporin although I haven't done that in a few years I just use it for soap mainly um, other people have uh, some say it's good for eczema and psoriasis I don't know I've never used it for that um, <clears throat> But just like people claim it as it's, it's a miracle, you know, miracle resin, um, if you're allergic to it, it's not. I have a close relative of mine is actually very allergic to it and it, <clears throat> it makes her itch and it, um, and she ended up in the hospital, but you, you just need to be careful. Like if you're allergic to, you know, aspirin or you're allergic to tr many trees or, you know, you want to use caution. Um, let me see. So without further ado, um, let's go and make this soap, the Balm of Gilead soap. Okay, so I have this lid for sprouting seeds, and I dumped out the oil. But I know there's still a lot of oil in those uh, buds. And I want to get every last drop out because these are seriously liquid gold in my book. So I'm going to unscrew the lid. I have this nifty jelly bag. Um, I use it when I make jellies and stuff. You could also use a nut, a nut milk bag, or just a regular old, you know, flour sack cloth or whatever. sleeves and we are gonna squeeze so this infusion I had going in the sun. I had my jars outside. It happened to be sunny. It was only like 60 or 70 degrees, but the sun was bright. And the in two days sitting in the sunlight, the buds really opened up and you could see the resin that came right out of the buds. And I'll show you the jar in just a sec, or I'll just, I'll take a picture of it and then insert that in the video so you can see just how like resiny this stuff is. Another way you could um, you could just infuse at room temperature for a week 
or so. I've seen people do it up to a year, but when you do that, you need to be careful for mold. I was not 100% sure that mine were completely dried out. I, I'm sure there's some moisture in there. Um, so I didn't want it to infuse for too long, and I'm not gonna be using this oil and salt, obviously, I'm measuring it for soap. So a little bit of moisture in there is fine. The high pH of the soap will act as a preservative and. I mean, I'm adding other water to the soap anyway, so it's all good. My hands, though, would normally be sticky, but the oil really helps combat that stickiness. Um, another way you can heat infuse this, uh, don't heat it up too hot, but you could put it in a crock pot with warm water for a day or so. You could always put it in a, or like a, a pot on your warming section of your stovetop. I would put like a ring, like a canning jar ring, on the bottom of the pot and then put your glass jar on that ring. I've had jars crack, not when infusing, but when canning, and so I just really wouldn't want that to crack. Just a preventative. So I'm gonna clean this up and then we'll continue on with the soap making. I'm dumping in my lye mixture, which is hot. It's fully dissolved though. It's normal to get some of those crystals. It's not undissolved lye, it's just Crystals. But my um, my tallow was hardening up on me in my bucket, <clears throat> so I wanted to use the heat from the lye mixture to uh, help keep that uh, tallow melted because it I think it's the it's high in stearic acid, and the stearic acid has a higher melting point. There's also goat's milk in here, so it may get a little hot, but it's okay. Some of this color is from the goat's milk, but this, some of this color is also, especially from the balm of Gilead, the balsam poplar buds we had added. I'm just gonna mix till it's completely emulsified. Now normally when I make balm of Gilead or uh, this poplar, infused soap. I like to keep it unscented because I find the scent of the buds, the poplar buds, comes through phenomenally. And uh, it, it just has such a pleasant, gentle, earthy aroma to it. This is a custom blend I'm making though, so we're going to be adding some essential oils to it. And those essential oils are orange, 10x, lavender, and cedarwood. And this, they're about at a 30 percent lavender, 30 percent cedar wood, and 40 percent orange. So this is my pre-measured essential oils. And this is an amazing blend. All of these essential oils are well behaving. I find the orange essential oil actually thins my soap batter for longer, so if you did want to do any um, fancy designs or whatever, orange is a great one to go work with. So the tallow that I'm using in here is from my parents' farm, which is just a few miles down the road. Um, I rendered the fat myself, it's the leaf fat from the kidney, so it's very high quality, it's grass fed, grass finished, not certified organic. That's okay. My dream come true, finally! What? Re uh, rice checks!
I just wanted to give you guys a brief analysis on my thought of how this bar of soap smells. I've never made it scented, uh, so this was the first time I'd used the essential oils in it. And I and I just wanted to say that I can still smell hints of the balsam poplar infusion in there. Uh, it's an absolutely stellar blend. Like I really love how natural it smells. Um, I can smell a little bit of the orange and lavender, not so much the cedar wood. I can actually smell the balsam poplar more than the cedar wood essential oil. But um, I'll make sure you guys have all the ratios and stuff. Uh, and if you ever make it, be sure to post it on Soap Making with Natural Ingredients Forum because you know we all love to see your photos. So anyway, have a great time soaping and thanks for watching.